Hello, welcome to this week's Kids Online. We're going to start by singing God is Good, just to sing it out to him and also maybe to remind ourselves that God is good all the time. James says, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? James is reminding us again that it's not just about what we say we believe, it's what we do, how we act. Now, to look at this a bit more, we are going to look at a parable Jesus told on the Sermon of the Mount about the wise man and the foolish man. Let's have a look at Saddleback Kids. Stories of the Bible, the parable of the two builders. This is Jesus, hey who is the son of God and the savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, 
He taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like walking on water. Oh, hey guys. And even raised people from the dead. Uh, Wahoo! One day, as he saw the crowds gathering, Jesus went up to the mountainside and sat down. His disciples gathered around him and he began to teach them. He asked them, Why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord, when you don't do what I say? Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. Hey, I'm gonna build here. Yeah, I'm gonna build out there. All right, suit yourself. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Oh, yeah. When the flood waters rise and break against that house, it stands firm because it was well built. I'll get it here. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish. All right, hey, it's nice. Like a person who builds a house on sand. Uh oh. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching. So, how many of you have been to the beach and have done that thing where when the tide's coming in, you build a sandcastle and then you fortify it and then you build a moat and then you build ramparts and then you pat it up and sometimes other kids on the beach get involved. And before you know it, you've got this massive sand fortification and you stand there and you're waiting for the tide to come in. Let's have a look at that. It's about time. Oh! As the tide rushes in, the sand gets soggy and the, the water and the force of the water starts to wash away the sand and it slowly um, gets knocked over or it just goes boom. But have you ever stood on a big rock as the tide is coming in? The waves swirl around the rock and then as they go out, they suck the sand away either side, but you are still firmly on your rock. Let's have a look at what Jesus means by this parable. So in this parable, the houses are a picture of us and what we believe. So I'm going to make a couple of Lego houses, but I'm going to build one really properly and carefully like this. I spent ages doing this this morning. It's actually harder than it looks, but I've stuck more carefully together and I'm going to put this on my rock from the garden. Now, my second house, um, I'm having to, um, oh gosh, what's the word? Um, can't think of the word. When you have to make do with what you've got can't think of it it's gone anyway I haven't got any sand so um, I went outside to find some soil but that was all soggy and wet and lumpy so bit desperate I've scraped out the bottom of the fire pit so this is ash so it's just sort of burnt up charred bits of wood and coals I guess so it's a little bit like sand but it's also quite lumpy and my house I'm going to build in it, I'm going to use Lego blocks, but I'm not going to stick them together because the idea, oh, can you see? No, probably not. Let's pop it, build it up. The idea is, is that the guy that built on the sand wanted to get it done quickly. He wanted a quick house. He didn't want to spend time 
thinking about it and sticking it down. So these two houses represent us. They represent how we listen, believe and act on what Jesus has said. If we're this house, then we listen carefully and we spend time doing the things that God has told us to do and really resting and rooting our lives in Jesus. If we're like this builder or this house, then we don't really listen and we don't really take much notice of Jesus teaching. And we certainly don't um, spend time trying to dig deeper and to act um, and to live out the way Jesus has taught us. And then the storms come. Let's see what happens when we pour the water on our rock house. Now, the storm, before it all goes horribly wrong, the storms are the difficult times in our lives where difficult things happen to us. And these things make us um, question God. Let's have a look. So here we go. Oh, it seems to be holding out quite well. The house is still standing and it hasn't slipped off the rock. Phew! Right, let's have a look at this one. Can you see? Let's pour the water on. So we're going to the roof. Oh no, it's just all fallen apart. The weight was too hard. Let's see what happens to the sand. Let's see if it subsides underneath. Well, it's not sand, is it? It's ash. It seems to just clogged up. Should we see if we can... Ah, oh, there we go. Yes, we've got a landslide there. Should we have a landslide here? Oh yes, it's all washing away. Let's just pour a bit more on that one because I did put quite a lot on the ash. There we go. Now, if we trust in Jesus and we put his words into action. When, that was the dog shaking himself. When difficult times happen to us, we can think, yes, God does love me. Yes, God does know what I'm going through. Yes, I know God is with me. He said so in the Bible. I will stand firm and wait on him. Oh, the dog's eating the Lego. Let's quickly get that out of the way. That's not good, is it? Have you got any in your mouth? Let's have a look. Got your Lego in your mouth? <laughs> no. When we're this sort of house, when troubles hit, we find ourselves going, help, everything's going wrong. Oh no, what did God say? Oh, I don't think God knows what's happening. Help, ah, I give up, it's all too hard. <sighs> Which house do you want to be? Now, of course, we all struggle with things at times and we can all be a little bit like this and a little bit like that, can't we? Let's be like the house that the wise man built on the rock. So this week, to fit in with our theme, I've asked Darcy and Ivy if they would make rock buns for us. Hi, my name's Ivy. Hi, my name's Darcy. And, and we today we will, we will be making, making rock cakes. So you will need 200, 225 grams of self-raising flour, 75 grams of sugar, 125 grams of butter, 150 grams of fruit, one egg, and one tablespoon of milk. Before we begin, you can just quickly, you you need to quickly wash your hands now. If you have done them already, um, that's then great. that's great and fine. Uh, or you, if you haven't, you can just 
go and do pause the video now and go do them um, right now. Um, as you can see, um, we're not really see. We've already washed our hands right now. Yes, yes. And um, so quickly, you might want to um, turn your oven to 180 degrees and um, just so that it's ready for your rock cakes to bake. And also, um, we have, have we like to put in our mix cut mixed peel, uh, and that's optional. You don't have to put it in there, but we just like to put a little bit of that in there. Yes. So let's get started. Step one: begin by stirring together the dry ingredients in a bowl until they are well combined. So you girls are going to need your scales. And your mixing bowl. Here we um, have meeting scales and a mixing bowl, then a knife and a spoon. Scale, then. Okay, so, Ivy, do you want to do the flour? Yes, I here. I'm going to do the flour. Let's see on the recipe how much flour? Flour, 225 grams. Wait, we, so, all you need to do is you just quickly need to pour in um, and weigh on your scales, set at zero, um, 225 grams of make sure you, freezing flour. Make, make sure you don't um, put the bag or your hand or arm on the scales, otherwise you'll get mixed up. Mixed up. Slowly, slowly. That's about perfect. If you go a tiny bit over it, that's fine. Good it doesn't really matter. So, Darcy, do you want to weigh out the sugar? Now, uh, you are going to need to put in your mix uh, 75 grams of sugar. So, you just carefully pour that in and turn it back to zero so that you know how much you've put in. just gone a little bit over there so we're just going to scoop a little bit out and that's okay because it's really easy to scoop out with but a just, spoon but just make sure you don't scoop any of the flour out just the sugar so next we will be doing um, our butter wait a minute because we're just doing dry ingredients oh okay so Let's give those a mix. So begin stirring with just a spoon, not a mixer. Stirring them together very slowly so that you don't spill anything. And then until they combine. Well done. So give that a mix and then we'll weigh in the fruit. Yes. And like I said before, you don't have to add the cut mix to peel. That's just what we like to add in. Great. Right, Darcy, or actually Ivy, do you want to weigh out the 100 sugar. grams of sultanas? Oh, yes. So, sultanas, they're just like, they're raisins, just we, they're just raisins, you can add them. They, we, they're just called on the pack sultanas. That's because they're slightly larger than raisins, but anyway. Yep. 
give that another little mix. So this time Darcy is mixing it, so we're just sharing terms now. Yep, and, so, and keep mixing until it just does look like it's all mixed in nicely together, combined. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so next we're going to weigh out the butter. Butter. Here it is. So, yes. Okay, that's so it. Put that to one side for a minute, don't you? Make sure you put your mix to one side while so, you weigh out the butter. So, try, if you have one, you can just get a board like one of these. We have one. And then get your butter, put it, open it up. Then you also need a knife so you can cut it. Wait, what are we doing? Okay, so we're gonna do um, 125 grams. Remind everybody how much butter they need. So you need you will need 125 grams of butter to put into a bowl onto a plate so that so you can mix it into your mix. Pretty much perfect. Right. Now, Darcy, can you cut the butter up into like chunks, mm -hmm. please? So yeah. now you just need to cut your butter up into smaller chunks and just give it a nice chop. Yeah, and then once you think the butter is done getting chopped, then you can just plop it in and then mix it up. Lovely. So when you've got your nice chunks, tip it into the bowl and then we're going to do the messy bit and use our fingers to make it look like breadcrumbs by squishing the butter into the flour. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll be taking turns. If you're, any, if you're doing it with one kid or no kids, you can just do it. Or you can just squish it up We have 
have mixed made it properly. And yeah, it's all crumbled up. Exactly. Yeah, so once it's a bit like breadcrumb texture. And our brother Arlo um, just he has cracked, cracked the, uh, the egg into here, and I've just quickly whisked it. Well, not whizzed it, but mixed it up with a fork. Um, and what else did you that. add in? And I added one tablespoon of milk. milk just saying, yeah. um, egg mixture. To the egg mixture, yes. Okay. And you can do that now. Right, yeah. now, Darcy, if you can pour the egg mixture into in, the... Yes, into the bowl. And then, and then you can stir it up very nicely and just... Uh, just Until it combines it. like to a nice sticky dough. Yeah. Do you mix it with your hands? No, I go for the fork. Are you? Yeah. I would not want to mix it like that. Okay, so guys, all you need to do is you can just mix it. Yes. Um, mix the egg into the um into the dry ingredients and just until it's a nice dough kind of. Um, texture and consistency. Um, so yeah, I'll just carry on with that, and then Ivy can explain the next stage of what we need to do. So place the spoonfuls of dough on the baking paper and bake on gas gas mark for um 180 degrees, like I told you uh, before. If you haven't done it, just switch and on now. now. For 15 to 20 minutes um, until browned at the top. Browned, browned at the top. So your dough or mixture should be looking a bit like this right now. Um, yes. So as you can see, sticky but not like a really, really tough, like really um, squished together and um, in kind of just one big blob, it's kind of just Lovely. crumbly, but not too crumbly. Okay then, so, so if that's ready, get your baking tray. So get a spoon, get a scoop. Um, yeah, little circle or square. That's, don't squish it too much. And just um, um, remind me on. if if you're if you're doing this just as a child, um, you can always ask your parent or carer to help you put these in the oven once they're finished. Go in the oven. How long do they go in the oven for, Ivy? 15 to 20 minutes. You put them in the oven. Very nice. So our, so our rock cakes have just come out of the oven. Yeah. Um, they're looking very, very nice. nice. They've got a golden colour and they've just... You can see that they've off. shrunk and went down a little bit and it's a bit thinner and all that. Spread out. Yeah, spread out. Um, they look perfect with a cup of tea, don't they? Yeah, yeah. they would do. <laughs> Not that we drink tea at all, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah I'll you have do. <laughs> I would have a mint tea or something. <laughs> I hope yours have turned out, out very, very, very good. Enjoy making them. Have fun. Bye. Bye. Brilliant. Thank you, guys. We're going to finish our session now by asking, ooh, asking God to help us build strong houses on his strong rock. Lord Jesus, thank you that you want us to be strong in you. Help us to look to you and to build our lives on you like a house on a rock so that when storms come and difficult things happen, we can um, stay firm on you. 
thank you that you will help us. Amen. And we'll finish with um, a song by Nick and Becky Drake called Every Eye Is On You. Bye-bye. See you next week. Every eye is on you